Let's do it. We be on fire. We be lit, lit, lit. It's a unique hustle. Big, big shit. Big shit. Big shit. That's your original big intro music. Big hustle, nigga. Big shit. Y'all, y'all big on it. Big I see. I'm not mad at you. Yeah. Name another Having podcast. a good time. Like As you should. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nah, nah, nah. You know my dad. Man, we down in Los Angeles, man, and uh, we like I say, man, we stumbled up on these gems, man. Hey, man, want to thank Kenyatta for inviting us into his set, right? Kenyatta in Sands. The, hey, man, Kenyatta. Says, man, hey, we here, man, doing it with comedian Alex Thomas. What's going on, baby? Man, I am good. Do people know that you guys are married? Because you've been just made it like the beautiful, the lovely. I, I, I don't expect you to go and my wife. <laughs> oh, did I just mess up? Did I no, just no, no, we everybody know that. Everybody know. And what did you say back to him? It sounded super country. Y'all got a <laughs> nice little country chemistry going on. What did you say back to him? I said, "What's going on?" I said, "I'm here." That's oh, you said no, that. Oh, I understood like that. 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 that what you Whatever said. you said earlier, I did not. I said, Modell, well, walk on. Thank That's you. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> the same thing what I just told you, Nathan. But how was I supposed to know Modell, walk on? What does that mean? <laughs> I mean, I'm here. In? In Jamaican Patois. Okay, you did you know you're talking as if I just should know that, right? You, yeah, I guess. You just taught me just, something. Um, Patois is a universal language. Well, I didn't get it here in LA. <laughs> Sounded cool, but I was like, that must mean something else. But yes, I love it. I love, I love, I love black love. I'm a fan of black love. There you go. I love my wife too, so I know how it is, brother. Just um, I know you got this book out, man. You know, and at the end of the day, man, you brought me a copy. I see, man, the funny don't stop. This is mine. I know it. I can. You know it is, it. And, and I, I bought a shirt. It's gonna be pretty much uh, to uh, sign it. Yeah, of don't course. get it signed. And I seen here you had Nipsey Hussle <laughs> in this thing, man. And, and I seen it. I seen this as well. And this is my uh -huh. type of book. Yeah, this is the one I can read. I and tell you, yeah. turn to the Why very he back. in a dress? Oh, this is for me, man. I, well, there's a whole lot. Well, I'm gonna explain what this book is all about. Yeah, because I'm shocked now. And then, and then, now. And then you'll joke. understand. Okay. Nowadays, being a comedian is more dangerous than <laughs> but being a But hold on, before we get into all of that, before, before we, we get into the book, let, let, let me let, explain let, to everybody what this is. Which camera is the best? That one? Either one of them. This is my new book. It is called The Funny Don't Stop. The Funny Don't Stop. When you say Alex Thomas, you say The Funny Don't Stop with it. In fact, let me hear y'all on three. One, two, three. The, the Funny, funny don't, don't Stop. One more time. The Funny, funny don't, don't Stop. Okay, that is also the name of my new one hour special. Wow. That's also the name of my podcast, The Funny Don't Stop Show. Wow. And just it's just like a commemoration of this year is my 30 year anniversary of doing stand up comedy, TV, wow. movies, and uh, The Funny Ain't Stopped. You know awesome. what I mean? So this was my pandemic project. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you for when the pandemic hit, I went through some serious anxiety issues. I was like, wow, we going to ever hit a stage again. Are they, are, are, am I going to ever be in an audience again? What am I going to do? Right. Mm -hmm. So for two years, um, I had an amazing, how could I say it, an illustrator that came into my life. Dude's one of the most incredible artists I've ever met in my life. Um, his name is Mike Goldstein. And he was able to turn a lot of my jokes and a lot of my crazy ass ideas into illustration. Mm. So everything that you see in this book is jokes and thoughts that came into my head. Mm. Stuff that, you know, I could have brought to the stage. Some stuff I have brought to the stage. Mm. And some stuff is just crazy real things. Like, for example, right here, the truth is we had a baby, my wife and I, during the pandemic. Really? He just, he just happened to be a pandemic. Oh, this is not the pandemic, baby. This is uh, when I got my prostate check. Wow. Yeah, I was and, wondering. I was and, like, oh. That is not the baby. That is not the baby. No, no, this is not the baby. This is this particular joke is uh, I got my prostate check. I got a colonoscopy and I got a. Uh, the thing that most men scared to even go and get checked. Absolutely. And I'm not going to lie to you when. Um, what's his name? Uh, pandemic. He was a. Uh, 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 how am I going to forget his name? Chadwick Bozeman. Yeah. Okay. Rest in peace. Died at 43. That made you go. Of colon cancer. That then made you go. made me really look into it. And I found out that colon cancer is one of the number one killers of black men in America. Mm -hmm. And, you know, black men are scared to go yeah. to, to the, yeah. to the mm -hmm. you know, to go see doctors. And they don't want to find out. It used to be you have to be 50 to check it. But 43, he died. So I was, it was ironic. I was already scheduled to go get my prostate checked. Mm -hmm. But when that happened, I was like, hey, man, I got three kids. I got a wife. It's time to go 
get my asshole cleaned out pretty much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Long story short, wow. I went and got the prostate check. I got a colonic and I got a colonoscopy like in that order. Was it as bad as um, everybody, was the fear of it? Was it what? Was it as bad as people think it is? Let like, me tell you something. You go and, like, does it like hurt? Does it? There was more activity in my ass than a RuPaul picnic, okay? <laughs> when I tell you they was up in me, I tell the whole story on stage just to kind of like have black men live vicariously through me. Because, you know, we're such a homophobic, yeah, yeah. you know, people. You yeah. know what I mean? I, one of the jokes I do on stage, your brother's like, oh, can I cuss on this? Mm -hmm. well, dude, you know, one of the homies I grew up with, he's like, oh, hell no, fuck that shit. Ain't nobody getting up in my ass. Like, that's the only way they can get in there. <laughs> yeah, they can't go through your ears. They can't go through your mouth. They can't go through your eyes. Right. They got to go through your ass, right? So the first thing the dude told me, he was like, what, what if the doctor take advantage of me? I was like, bro, he's an asshole doctor. <laughs> he sees 32,000 assholes a year. The Damn. last asshole he's thinking about is your phone head. <laughs> right? I said, you either going to get this checked or you're not. So I tell the story, you know, to make brothers feel comfortable. Like, I tell, I'm not going to tell because I want y'all to get the book and also yeah, see my yeah, special. Yeah. But uh, I tell people that the prostate was 30 seconds. The colonic was one minute. The colonoscopy was one hour. Mm. That was, but it turned out, man, it was the best thing I ever did because it's kind of like a a peace of mind when you know that that is clean, that is clean. and mm -hmm. clear. Then you know a lot of people don't know that our you know our inside. What do you call it? Um, digestion our intestines yeah. and digestive is actually the biggest organ in your body. It's like forty three yards long. And you think about it. It's, I tell brothers all the time. You like cars? Yeah. W would you go five years without getting a, a tune up? Would you, mm -hmm. Would you go ten years without changing your oil? Mm -hmm. Like, nah. Why the hell you ain't clean your asshole out? I saw all kind of shit I didn't know what was up in oh, me. I mean, showed it to you? I, I mean, I ain't had no, oxtails. I ain't had oxtails in 10 years. I saw oxtails. I ain't had black licorice since 03. We talking about <laughs> when you do that colon, um, colon, what was it's it? It's the colonoscopy. Colonoscopy. Remember, that's that thing where they put it uh, in your butt and you sit yeah. down and they have the tube and you can watch all this stuff coming Come out. Okay, now, now let me clarify that. That's part of why I'm the comedian that I am because I actually break that down. Okay. The colonic is the tube in your butt oh, okay. and you can see the shit right. coming out. That's where I saw, you know, a nickel. That's what I was, it, yeah. <laughs> that's where I saw oxtails. That's where I saw shit I ain't seen in years, right? And that was the 30 minute process. Right. The colonoscopy, you're knocked the fuck out. Completely on propofol. You know what propofol is? That's what yeah. Michael Jordan, yeah. Michael Jackson, Jackson was to sleep yeah, to yeah. every night, yeah. yeah. So I was on that, that was a whole hour. That's where they had to go deep. Whereas a colonic is one hour and that's just filling you up with hot water and just fleshing it out. Fleshes you out and you're just literally, it's almost like saying you can go get a car wash or you can go get a detail. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Car wash is getting a little dirt and dust Yeah, because outside. your digestive system do not digest all of that stuff that you've been putting in your body for years. Your whole life. Right. And a so, lot of black people don't realize that the number one hypertension and, and, and the high blood pressure and cholesterol, man, if they were just to cleanse themselves, we wouldn't have those problems. Wow. It wasn't about my asshole today, but um, <laughs> yeah, you, just, you just gave it up. I, 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 I brought that up because <laughs> not only in my book, The Funny Don't Stop, it, it, it takes true things that really happened in my life during the pandemic, all the way down to Joseph. So when I brought up that we had a baby, we had a pandemic baby. In fact, his birthday was yesterday. He just turned two. Uh, he was born with a mask on. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Nigga oh, spent wow. the first year and a half of his life when he got the mask on, on, right? So I talk about that, and uh, it's just a little insight into my life and what I went through through the pandemic. So I'm just very proud of it. You know, been writing for other people for years. You know, so it's kind of cool to do something on my own. You know, I, I mean? love the fact that you did it on a level that I could understand. Like Tiffany Haddish says, so here on the back of my book, you'll see some quotes from yeah, some very yeah. famous people. T Tiffany Haddish said, "Even if you can't read, even no. if you can't read, you're gonna love this book." Cause there's a lot of pictures in there. <laughs> no, it's, yeah. a, it, it's it's a simple setup and then a punchline. Let me ask you yeah. something, man. And I I love the book. I know mm. it's mine. I can't wait to get it signed and put yeah. it put it back at my spot. You know, in Dallas, Texas, and man. spread the word. And spread the word. All they gotta man. do is go to Amazon. You can look at his family right here, babe. Yes. They looking good. Oh, that's a beautiful they that's family. family. They love my family. That's my wife. Uh, I have a son. She has three kids? Yes. My son is four. His name is Legend. The, the two-year-old that just turned two, 
His name is Trust, and I have a daughter, a seven-year-old. She, her name is Halo. And okay. Wow, this is great. I'm the older one. Older. Who's the older one? Now, and that's my wife, and that's my wife's mama. Oh, she don't. Hold on. Like hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hell no. No. You said that's your my wife and that's my your mom. I mean, that's you. Hold that's, on, who is who? I know, right? <laughs> because they look good, man. These look like they could be sisters. Like nobody could be nobody's mama. Get it all the time. All my boys are like, "What's up with her mama?" mama. Hey, How yeah. old so is her mama? mama. mama. So so somebody, somebody went like this. Who's the white chick? <laughs> so that's her the mom's mama. just really, really light skin. So She's that's Creole. the mama, and yeah. that's the exactly. That's the okay. So her mama was born, uh, you know, in in Louisiana. She's real, real fair skin. But wow. my wife's daddy. Ten times blacker than my shirt, though. Oh yeah, that nigga, how old that is nigga, your wife? That nigga is purple. How old is your wife, or how young is your wife? I forgot. You uh, know, I just know she's ten years younger than me. Oh, we're Whoa. eight years apart. Yeah, we're eight, yeah. She's, she's ten years younger than me. So yeah, I found me a little young one back Man, in the you day. You got to, you got to. But I was of age, and she was too. So I got to make that clear. <laughs> Ain't no R. Kelly. So all, all I say is I met her, and she was twenty four. That's all oh, I need oh, to okay. say. Okay. Yeah, I met her. You, you, you checked the ID card. Oh yeah, I got uh, a, a urine sample and also a gas <laughs> bill. I need to make sure all that shit was straight. You know what I mean? Okay, so what we like to do here, we like mm -hmm. to go back because we jumped straight into the book. Mm -hmm. But we like to go back to know, you know, your upbringing, where you're from, mm -hmm. family, mm -hmm. mental illness. Depression, <laughs> all of that good stuff. So go. I ahead. noticed that. I noticed that in your family. Well, shit. What family don't have uh, some type of dysfunction in it? I was born and raised in South Central LA. Mm -hmm. You know, um, where I came from. You always hear rappers talk about you ain't supposed to be here and all that. You know, uh, I'm gonna kind of be all over the place if that's, that's okay. Fine. Go ahead. Uh, born and raised in South Central LA. I was the only black kid in an all white private school. Uh, ended up obviously, as you probably probably know, I wrote. On uh, the TV show, the original Fresh Prince of Bel Air, yeah, for four years, mm -hmm. uh, ninety three to ninety seven. One reason Will Smith and I got along so well is the same way he grew up on the East Coast was kind of similar to how I grew up on the West Coast. Um, I, you know, I have four brothers. Uh, parents were together pretty much the majority of my whole life. They divorced like once I was grown and out the house. Um, yeah, man, not a lot of people put it this way. I told somebody recently. I did. This, by 21, I had been to 21 funerals. Wow. Mm. Dope. Growing up in South Dope. Central LA, you know, half your family's Crips, half your family's Bloods. I, I, you know. But you never joined any of those. I, I'm here to tell you, and I say it in a lot of my interviews, not every young black man that grew up in South Central mm. LA in the 80s was caught up in the gang life. Yeah. I, I, yes, I know them all. Yeah, we know all about them. I, I, know, I know the city like the back of my head. I just personally, didn't get caught up. In fact, to, to get any more deep with that, uh, people ask me all the time, so how did you avoid it? Mm. How did you not yeah, become exactly. a trick or a blood? I was like, yeah. because I was afraid of this thing called my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Forget the Crips of the Bloods. I was afraid of my daddy whooping my ass. You know what I mean? And then when I did join a gang, it was called the Cub Scouts. <laughs> so that was as close as I got. But, so another thing that I talk about a lot, people go, so how really honestly, how did you like avoid going down that lane, right? And I always say, my parents kept me so involved in positive activities that I didn't have time for crime. Yeah. So give you a good example. I remember the day like it was yesterday when they wanted me to go on a drive by. 14 hmm. years, 15 years old, 1984. Really? I'm talking like the middle, the height of gang banging and crips and bloods and colors, colors, colors. You know, the homies was like, hey, you down with the hood? I'm like, hell yeah. You riding with us? I'm like, hell yeah. You, you going on this drive-by with us? I was like, hell yeah. What time you doing the drive-by at? He's like, we doing it at three o'clock. I'm like, fuck, I got soccer practice. <laughs> Y'all doing like some crimes tomorrow or something like that? <laughs> and, the, and the dude was like, hell yeah, we doing something tomorrow. I'm like, yeah, what? He's like, we robbing the liquor store. I was like, hell yeah. He says, you down with the hood? I'm like, hell yeah, I'm down with it. What time you robbing the liquor store? He like six o'clock. I'm like, fuck, I got choir rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> it was always I'm swamped, going. guys. I'm just swamped. I just, I just can't get down with you. And you know, that mentality and so many things that I was doing, it made me think, wow, it's going to be the same way when I have kids. They're going to be so involved in activities. They're not going to have time, time for that bullshit. Man, so many people. I'm pretty sure if you talk to every stripper on this planet, if you talk to every dope dealer, if you talk to every gangbanger, if if he was busy, 
doing something positive between 15 and 20, like those those serious years mm -hmm. of what the direction you're going to go in your life. Mm -hmm. But they were able to do whatever the fuck they wanted to do. Chances are when they got older, oh, they did what the fuck they wanted to do. A lot yeah. of times that ended up on the pole, jail, mm -hmm. die bys, unfortunately. I'm yeah. not knocking those people. So anybody that's watching like, oh, no, I'm just saying I'm trying to lead by example. Exactly. And say, be involved in your kids' lives. Which is 100 percent true. If you let them decide what the hell they're going to do, How, how's, a kid, how's your kid going to tell you what they're going to do? No, no, they don't know right from wrong. Right. I hate when I hear the, the stories right. of brothers, yeah, nigga, about 16, nigga, I was, I was a man in the household, nigga, I just sell this dope. No. And I'm like, that's horrible. Right. That is fucking horrible that you had to be a man at 16, at 16 because you didn't know what it was to be a man. Mm. Unfortunately, you were dealt the cards you were dealt. Mm -hmm. So again, I have to say that because people hear things and they take it they out of turn, context. They twist it. It, you know, they, 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 shout out to the black women out there that had to be mama and daddy. No, really. That had to do everything. But I'm just saying, imagine if they didn't have to do that, that boy wouldn't have went down that road. One more thing I wanted to ask you before. Um, how did you get into comedy? And how old were you? So comedy was <laughs> even like Kenyatta, I tell you, and all my friends that are around, I was just always the silly, funny dude. Mm -hmm. Not trying to be, not saying, hey guys, you know, I want to be a comedian. No, I was. I guess I just had the person, I was the dude that already always had everybody laughing, even though I was pop locking and dancing and, and being in dance groups and doing all, I was, I was in the party world. I was just always the dude that had everybody laughing. Cut to high school, I ended up winning class clown best sense of humor. It wasn't like in September, I'm like, vote for me in July. <laughs> best sense of humor, funny guy. No, it just happened that way. Mm -hmm. So obviously, you know, those years, you know, I'm looking up to two people and two people only. That was Eddie Murphy and Richard Pryor. Mm -hmm. wow. Don't get me wrong, I loved hip hop. Hip hop was new, but I was looking up to those two comedians. Not saying I want to be like them, not knowing one day I'd be friends with Eddie Murphy, mm -hmm. my idol. It's just, it just, happened how did you get your first break well my, my, my first well it started i'm pretty sure you know this the story uh, but uh, for the people that don't know i was a dancer on soul train mm -hmm. 15, I remember. 15 to 20 years old getting I to was, it yes getting to it come on man i was just a local hood celebrity <laughs> and you got to think about it those years let's just take 85 to 90. Come on, man no matter who you were whether you were michael jackson prince luther vandross or new edition whoever you were and you were black you had to go on Soul Train. Right. That's before MTV. That's mm -hmm. before BETV. It didn't get no bigger than Soul, than Soul Train. Right. So you got to think about it. I'm a hood celebrity because I'm going down the, the line every week. Mm -hmm. No credits. I didn't know. No, I was just having fun as a kid. Mm -hmm. But I was that dude that even though I was just dancing, I was around all these stars. I learned on my own the whole networking shit. Mm. Here I am. 17, 18 years old with a phone book full of stars. Cause I, I didn't know any better. I, I was that dude if when you know Tony, 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 L L Cool J, Luther Vandross come and they see me dancing, they be like, oh, you the dude on Soul Train, man. Like, that's me. Let's get a picture. What's your phone number? <laughs> nigga, front number. I'm like, Smart. nigga, I can call Luther Vandross right Smart. now. Yeah, right. Nigga, I can really go hang out that's with LL Cool J. That's and smart. I didn't realize I say that to say, when I started doing stand-up in 1991. Right. A lot of the stars out there, they knew me as the dancing dude. Mm. So let's just take rest in peace. Uh, Easy E. Take people like Run DMC, Hammer. When they started seeing me on the, the deaf comedy jams and the comic views, excuse me, and all the comedy shows, they're like, that's the little dancing nigga. Like you do stand up now. You get what I'm saying? Mm. I already had these relationships. I'm the dude that. Before I even got into Hollywood, I was kind of like already in Hollywood. Right. So here I am, amateur nights, me, Chris Tucker, Dave Chappelle, all of us amateurs. We've only been doing comedy, you know, year, year and a half. And they used to want to Dave Chappelle, Chris Tucker, all of them be like, how you know all these star niggas already? Remember Chris coming right. from Atlanta mm -hmm. to become a young up and coming guy. Dave Chappelle, he's coming from D.C. Like nobody was famous yet. So we're all brand new, but they used to wonder, how does Tupac already know you, nigga? How does Tony, Tony, Tony already know you? Nigga, how does LL Cool how did Prince know you? How did Whitney Houston already? Because I was the dude, I had their phone numbers. 
If Whitney Houston had a birthday party, nigga, I was there. Wow. You know what I mean? If LL Cool J had an album release party up at Clyde Davis's house, I was there. How you get them? Because they were at Soul Train. Wow. And it all came from Soul Train. I'm not even gonna lie. It came from Soul Train. And then, now when I cut to, I'm in the entertainment now, now I'm making a name for myself. I'm like, nigga, I've been knowing it for 20 years. Mm. Been knowing it for 15 years. And then when people see my Instagram, you know this thing called Throwback Thursday came around? You that killed really him. fucked him up. You killed him. They're like, nigga, that picture looked like you was 12 years old with Prince and Whitney Houston and Bob Brown. I'm like, because I really have kind of like Built been doing places. this since I was 15 years old. So yeah, let me let me ask you. I got to ask you the question that I always ask everybody. What what I want to ask you is because I asked I asked Faison the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, for as Bubba, shout out to Faison Love, yeah, yeah Faison Love, one of the first dudes I met in this business. Really, and we've yeah. been friends ever since. So Bubba Dub, uh, do you know Bubba Dub? <laughs> comedian. Yes, Bubba <laughs> Dub, Country Wayne. Yeah. I asked this question to all the older comedians because mm-hmm. they and the movie and the and the uh, the series, the the comedy series. You've been in every. Thing. Um, we always ask this question How do you feel about the new way that these guys are doing with the internet success that they're having versus the way that things originally were done in stand up? And now you're doing, uh, you have nights where you guys come on the same stage and y'all both have to rock out and you have to have mutual respect for one another. Mm-hmm. So, how does that weigh out versus, you know, the way it was, Damn. the way it is? I don't knock it. And I'm one of the OGs that embraced it. You okay. Could, you could look at my social media and tell. Yeah. I, I embraced it. I mean, a lot of the OGs, you know, my age or my level or higher, at first they were really against that with this whole this shit, this old Instagram shit. Man, old, face on his own. He was like, that's some other, shit. that's some other shit. And I'm not knocking anybody that does. I do what I can do. I'm not I'm not a TikToker, you know. I don't care if a kid walked in and he's 19 right now and you tell me he got 152 billion views. It's just not my shit. I always tell them young niggas, I was fake. I was funny your whole life. Yeah. So I found a way. You yeah. Get, you get yeah. what I'm saying? Um, I I just when it first started, I just had a problem with dudes calling themselves comedians. OK, you, you're funny. Anybody can be funny for 30 seconds, maybe a minute. A comedian is there's 2000 people. Here's the mic. You're next. I, now, now let me see how funny you are, because that's an art form right there. You get up there and entertain those people for 20 minutes. A room full of thousand strangers, and you, and you kill them. Oh, more power you to you, but you're guy. a comedian. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Good job, right? But a lot of these cats, the social media guys, it's almost like I hate to say it, insta, instant, insta. It's like insta famous. People are getting famous without having to be talented. Wow. People, uh, you know, they, they're getting it twisted just because you have 11 million followers. I've had dudes that have 11 million followers but don't have 11 minutes of jokes on stage. No, I get you, it. I get, get it. what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I've seen it happen right in my fucking face. Yeah. Again, not knocking them in any kind of way. I know a lot of the young, you know, social media dudes that are, that, that were able to flip it, you know, like take DC Young Fly, yeah, Country Country, country Wayne, Wayne. Uh, Lewis Belt, a lot yeah. of, you know, a lot of these dudes were able to flip it and make Man, I'm proud of those no, dudes. And that's and, and that was the whole, make that, was, happen. that was a whole conversation because I think it was even Columbus Short. We talked to him a little earlier. Mm-hmm. He was like, you know, because they was comparing the residuals versus the YouTube and the Facebook way they. Oh, get that's paid. a different world. So that's a different um, they, world. they was trying to figure out how are they going to get paid when they're all, you know, when, once everything goes away. Right. How does that world work? Right. Well, look. Well, you know what it is. It's almost like Instagram and uh, social media. It's kind of like uh, what we used to call like having to pay your dues. Yeah, it's almost like if you know anything about baseball, it's almost like it's the uh, it's the minor leagues. It's getting you ready. It's the farm system yeah. before ABC, NBC, CBS. That was the generation I I came up under. But now you know the way it is now. You you can mess around and have ten million followers, and ABC will give you a shot. Yeah, yeah. You know because of your following. But there's one thing you can't cheat and there's one thing you can't lie on you you still have to know your craft that's correct and what happens is a lot of these instagram is like dude you're still living on your mama's couch and you really didn't truly learn the trade yeah you know it's almost yeah. like a chick that's all she does is twerk and show her ass and show her titties every day and now she does she think that a queen latifah is going to respect that 
Does she think a Jada Pinkett? Does she think a Gabrielle Union? Does she think, uh, you know, an Oprah Winfrey is going to respect that? No, there's a lane for it now. Don't get me wrong. There's a lane for, uh, what do you call it? Uh... Uh, reality TV. Yeah, yeah. These niggas are getting famous off just literally fighting for a whole hour. And they get down. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then talking mess. And then, I, I, okay, yeah. I've, I've flipped through the channels and saw you a couple of times, but it's not the same respect. No, I get it. It's not the respect of what we call a body of work. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I know it. I know So exactly. I'm not knocking, because I, I know the younger generation, they'll take every single thing that I said. I think, it's, I think that I'm knocking their way and their route. All I'm saying is, do what you got to do, but just know still to this day, man, you still got to work on your craft. Still take acting classes. Just because you can get a thousand views real quick in five minutes on your phone, don't you want to be a better actor? Yeah. Don't you want to be a better actress? So if you do get a chance on a real sitcom, on a real TV show, know what four cameras is, know how to read a script, know how to cold read, know how to actually act. No, because they didn't work on it. No, you're right. There was no preparation. It's almost like I joke sometimes. These dudes nowadays be like, hey, hey, hold the camera real quick, right? Be in your mama's uh, driveway and it's a basketball hoop, right? Hold the camera. And I hit three in a row. And I'll be like, nigga ready for the league. No, you're not, nigga. <laughs> Just because you hit three, three shots, shots. That you, ain't gonna you ready be for the league. Ain't but be you, get, you get, get the exactly, comedy behind that, exactly. right? Yes. He thinks just because he made, no, no, you're not knowing about the part of being in shape. Not thinking about the blood, sweat, and tears of people that have been doing this their whole lives. Yeah. That are getting ready. So just because you shot three in a row, you think you're ready to go play for the Lakers? Just because just you made somebody laugh on your Instagram, you think you can open up for me, Chris Rock, Kevin Hart, and, and Dave Chappelle tomorrow night in the Such Just Theater? You, you think you can do that? that? Happening. So you think so you take it away from what Tyra Banks and some of these great actual supermodels did just because you threw on a uh, uh what is it, Fashion Nova thong? Yeah, yeah Fashion Nova thong. Mm -hmm. Now you're your model, your model now. Like just because they took pictures, your model. Is that what it is? It's different, ain't it, man? You got to work. My bottom line is you got to work. They're not building a foundation is what you're saying. Eventually, one day, you're going to need to know the answers on the test. You, wow. You can't cheat the process. You can't cheat the process. What yes, you, that's what I was what about to say. When you was, when you, how, what, what memories do you have with you and Jamie Foxx working on that show? Uh, what were some of the fonder memories? Man, it's incredible working with Jamie. I, I got real lucky early in my career, man, to work around people not only that I respected, but I learned from. Yeah. From being around Jamie Foxx every day at the Jamie Foxx show for three or four years, from being around Will Smith every single day for four years, yeah. from being around Martin, from being around Steve Harvey, from being around all these guys, you pick up things and apply it mm -hmm. to you. But I never was them. I could only be Alex Thomas. And you I, knew that. I, I'm not the dude that you, you could look at hours of my jokes. You could come to shows. You're never going to say that dude sounds like Chris Rock. He doesn't sound like Dave Chappelle. He doesn't sound like Kevin Hart. He doesn't no. sound like that. No, no, I have my own style. I know. But I learned different things. I come from learning from the athletic world. Even though I was never an athlete, I'm a sports fanatic. Okay. And I always hear the greats talk about how they became who they became. Mm -hmm. You might hear, man, such and such, such and such was my favorite. Like, I picked up how he dribbled and I, you know, I learned how he shot. And then I, I watched the way that dude played, played defense. And I just, kind of ended up doing my own stuff. It was kind of like that with me with stand up. Wow. Wow. That, and, and, and you know, that's something to be proud of because you knew not to try to mimic somebody else. You know what I mean? Not at all. Because some people do that. Some, yeah, you know that. that a lot of people do you that. So far, I know. I when know. you're trying to be somebody else, I feel bad for somebody that wants to try to be a Snoop Dogg. Or you want to, or you, or you want to embody Jay Z. We already have a Jay Z. We mm. we have a Snoop Dogg. We have, and it killed me over the years when I would see dudes that would be they they damn near had the same names. Yeah, yeah. I'll never forget. I was in Seattle somewhere. Some nigga introduced himself as Dr. Dre. I was like, nigga, either you're a real doctor, or you know, there's <laughs> kind of like a guy out there already with that name. Right? It's gonna be a, <laughs> it's, gonna it's gonna be, be hard, hard, to pull hard for you to pull that out. You know, but these like these people have no clue. <laughs> Like, be yourself, man. Yeah, I know. It's a great get, feeling to be yourself. Man, so what's, you, and you don't have to tell us everything. You probably can't tell. What, what, what are you working on now currently? Anything that, that you got under wraps? Just so, all up in my business. I, okay. Yeah, I just need to, I need I, to get that's that why out I'm there. I'm telling you everything that's going on in my <laughs> business. get that out there. That yeah. is why I'm here. <laughs> so, so, other than, other than my book, 
I got the number one uh, animated series right now okay. on Netflix. It's called Motown Magic. Okay. It's the history of, of Motown. Um, Smokey Robinson's executive producer. That's dope. I am in every episode. My my character name is Jimmy Mack. I'm a Jimmy red Mac. I'm a red convertible 1965 Cadillac. Hey. Named Jimmy Mack. And we're actually number one in America right now between one and 10 year old children. So if there's anybody out there watching right now that's black and they got kids between one and 10, chances are they watch Motown Magic every day. So if you go, to, if you go to Netflix, you'll see a red convertible Cadillac. And it's just a bunch of amazing characters and uh, it's it's super educational. Like my kids are seven, four, and one. Like how would they ever know about you know the Jackson Five, or how would they know about Little Stevie Wonder and and what, what Motown was all about? But they now know because they watch the show every day. But for everybody forty and older, you watching it and you singing along because every single episode we've done fifty two episodes so far is a different Motown song. So I heard it to the grapevine. It's on episode, but ABC. That's an episode. That's you know dope. what I mean. That's so dope because you you kind of fear the stuff that's out there that people are watching to to have a comfort that you are you have something that's really something that's not you know all these characters are being depicted in a way man right. like where they trying to sway they they everything. sliding all kind of boys kissing and boys I'm so and glad kind of, when you yeah. when you say that you yeah. don't know what kind of comfort it brings to a person who really watching Absolutely. on that level like damn I'm glad you said that because right. that's what this is about right, right. it's like let me stick something in right, there right. to make them maybe we can that's throw why you gotta watch it. I don't know if you guys probably don't have kids anymore but if you have nieces and nephews, if you have grandkids or anybody, I you got know, grandkids. They, they, anybody between one and ten, they'll know. And I come from kind of like the animated world. Not only, you know, did I do this book, but uh, I've been on Family Guy for ten years. Probably one of the biggest cartoons yeah. of all time. I've been on that ten years now as a recurring, just di- different characters. Like, say, uh, Family Guy's done three hundred episodes. I probably did like fifty or sixty. Why? So I'm not on it every week. I'm what's called recurring. Okay. But uh, yeah, man, just. Busy man. I need to. I need to ask you what. What do you say to that young kid or that young uh, aspiring uh, uh, actor or comedian that's trying to get in the game? What would you, what advice would you give him? Don't do it. <laughs> so look, um, no, just play. <laughs> no, um, any young people out there, man, if you're gonna do it, don't half-ass it. If you're gonna do it, commit. There's gonna be good. There's gonna be bad. I know a lot of this shit sounds cliche, right? But Hollywood and entertainment, just in general, is it's a roller coaster. What do roller coasters do? They go up, up. They come down. They go down. They go up. They go down. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's just entertainment. And I think the unfortunate part, if someone's not in your life that can, that outside of Instagram and social media to let you know that there's, there's, there's good and there's bad with this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You're, you're going to win some. You're going to lose some. You know, like a young comic came up to me just recently and kind of had a bad set and was like, the hell did I do wrong? Because that killed the other night. You know, like, okay, but that's 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 part of this journey. Yeah. Yeah. You've every been there, single right? night, not every single joke is gonna kill. Every room is different. Every room is different. Every room is different. I I do 30 cities a year. I'm I'm doing, you know, two thousand seater, three thousand seaters on a nightly basis. Every night's gonna be different. Damn. You're right. You're that's right. what makes you strong. Ask any athlete. Ask this take a brand new dude. Take a Steph Curry right now. Most relevant, newest world champion. He'll tell you every night was different. Yeah. yeah, my jump shot's the same, but every night when I'm when I'm at home, it's different. When I'm away, it's different. It's called a hostile environment. Mm-hmm. You know they don't like you when you're on the road. Wow, it kind of goes the same thing with us. with us. Yeah, yeah. No, I I, I just I like the fact that that you give an uh, understanding on how you know this thing can go, especially when you talked about the internet guys, because I see those guys and I'm friends with a bunch yeah. of them, but I see them work too. I see them, the ones you're talking about, the ones who just do it on the internet. And But I seen, like Bubba Dub, I seen him work his way up to a, a full room of people to where they come out every yeah, night. But he see, had to work his way to that. You have to. Take, take another dude you probably know, Desi. Like yeah, Desi yeah, Banks, Banks, right? yeah. I like him. Funny dude, right? Somebody, I don't know who got, I mean, I know he looked up to me also. We yeah, did a show yeah. together and he sat down in the front row he wanted and enough. watched me for That's an dope. hour, mouth wide open like, like, oh my God, I've seen this dude on TV my whole life. I, I knew that you did stand up, but he never really sat there and watched like a master work this craft, yeah, right? Yeah. And I don't know if that helped inspire him. Oh, hell. But I've told a lot of the young guys like him yeah. that 
I watch what you do. It's funny. I laugh all yeah, the time. Yeah, I yeah, see yeah, the yeah, yeah. little skits, you know, what the hood niggas be like and all that. I get it. Yeah, yeah. I get it. Those are all funny things, right? But you got to be able to translate that into ticket sales. Mm. Yeah. Because yeah. what happens is the young kids, this is free. Yeah, this it is. is free, right? It's free, yeah. You see what that nigga talking about today. <laughs> what a hood nigga be, da, 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 da. two minutes is done. Okay? How do you get that hood nigga's daddy, mama, auntie, to come pay $35, $40 to come no, see that so you can make 10, 15, 20 grand a night from making yeah. them joke for an hour just standing up there. So he had to learn and I saw that he did this. It's like with DC and those dudes that, that just were doing it on this and they're realizing, man, the youngsters aren't paying for the tickets. Man, you know that, right? That's right. Say you 20 to 25 right now and this is all you have and you've been following this dude for five years and you ain't paid one penny, but you know him, you know all the little funny little jokes. Okay, but now he's performing at the such and such and you 25 now and you got a wife you got, or you got a date. You got you to come pay to see him. with that money. But if you didn't have the material to make them come see you. So I think a lot of them now are learning. The younger generation are learning. Okay, that's a good way to suck them in for free and giving Instagram money. How can I make this money? I got to develop this thing called an act. Wow. I have to get jokes for an hour. Yeah. So I can charge $50, $60, $75. So I can leave this bitch with 15, 20 Mm -hmm. grand. Yeah. Yeah. So what we've been doing for these years is a business. You know what I mean? What they do on this was free. They they, they get money in different ways, the clothing lines and little sponsors and this and that. But you want to make real money? My note to kind of answer to what you're saying, all these young stand up comics or or future wannabe comedians and stuff that are just on Instagram. Do this. But trust me, you're going to have to write one day. You have to write one. You're going to have to have some jokes sooner or later that the people can come see live. Because that's how you make your money for real. And then obviously that leads to TV and movies. But I'm just talking about instant same way you went on that this morning and did a little funny little sketch. Got 200,000 views, two hours for free. Great. Still sleeping on your mama couch. <laughs> that seems funny. You see when that nigga jumped out the car and he did it. Okay, for free. That's good. I'm going to let you out of here, but I like, nigga, you need to turn that into now I'm at the such and such theater this weekend. It's me, such and such and such and such. You got to turn it to all Take lives. it to $50. Yeah. Come see me. It's but serious. Country Wayne made a lot of money on social yeah, media and all of that. Out. Before Country Wayne, before yeah. he actually started hitting the stage to mm-hmm. do stand up, mm-hmm. he made a lot of money off of YouTube, mm-hmm. Facebook, and Instagram. And a lot of, like I say, there's all, there are guys like Country Wayne that, that were able to figure it out. Sleep, that figured it out. Right. Right. But you still, if you're going to call yourself a comedian, my only thing, again, not knocking him or anybody else, is you have to develop an act. Only if you're going to call yourself a comedian. That's all I'm saying. No, you want to just I, be I funny on YouTube forever and Instagram, that's cool too. I'm not knocking you. But if you call yourself a comedian, you got to come up with an act because that's what the people pay to see. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Country Wayne and yeah. all those you people. Like do, all those uh, dudes. Anything with uh, Cat Williams before I get off here? Or? That's my boy. You know what I mean? I, I, all all the guys that the, the from my generation. The, yeah, from your, you, they know you. Yeah, yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> we just all had different routes coming up. But something I, you said earlier, though, is so dope that you figured it out for you, like what you were. Self-awareness exactly. is real, man. Exactly. A lot of the dudes, let's, let me just name two or three dudes that you, that you <laughs> all know. You know, shout out to Earthquake, right? Earthquake. Yes. Yeah, like Bruce Bruce. Like yeah, Bruce, Bruce Bruce. You, every black city, you know, I'm all the SJ, all the black <laughs> comedians, right? Yeah, what's that other one named? Lavelle Crawford. Lavelle Crawford. All the niggas are just the funny niggas this weekend. At the such yeah. such. Don't get me wrong, I know them all. Respect them all. But when we were all coming up, all they had was stand up. I was very blessed to already be doing TV. Yeah, and doing movies so different. and writing for TV shows. So I wasn't able to be on the Chitlet Circuit comedy shows. I wasn't able to be on the Def Comedy Jam tours and, and because I had a real Hollywood job and doing TV and movies. You That's know? dope. And I, I'm happy that they're still here. I'm happy. I'm really happy the most for, for Earthquake because he deserves it. Yeah. He's doing real dudes. good. He just got a Netflix special. He just got a Netflix special. And I'm not knocking any of these dudes. I'm just showing you different routes. Yeah, the way you had to come, the way this one may have to Everybody come. Everybody had different routes. I was just writing. I was just behind people. Like, you know, just, just the people that have followed me my whole year, I mean, on my whole career for all my movies, you know. You Players Club, the, the, the Players Wash. Club went hard. Who could play that game. Don't be a menace. Jamie Foxx. So all the stuff that, those were all 
that's just all part of my journey. Man, thank God you know? for your journey, man. I thank you. I, I respect you. That's why when I went and looked, I looked for you. Because for me, that's what I, I enjoyed, your career. I, I seen it. I just, mm -hmm. I, I just like certain things, and that was one of my likings. I seen the... Like Kevin Hart, there's certain people that do it a little different, and mm -hmm. you was that guy. Like you did it a little different. You know what I mean? Shout out to Kevin. You know, like I, I, I'm, I'm happy for what Kevin Hart has done for our business in our world. He took it to the next level. Yeah, but you know what I mean. A lot of people don't know I was actually the first to independently shoot a comedy special and get picked up by a major network in 2001. Wow. Yeah. Straight clowning. This is before Kevin. Is yeah, before my that's guess. why I just, why you think before, I mentioned him? Because of what you said. Hart and all those yeah. dudes. Straight clowning was my first one hour special. I had one of my close pro athlete friends that gave me some money. He was wow. like, back then it was like, why you ain't got an HBO special? And I'm like, man, they got me on this list. And I was on this list and you know, I just wasn't on the top five, 10. He was like, and that was at the time with like cash money, you know, that was at the time where like Master P was doing what he's doing in hip hop. Mm -hmm. He was like, nigga, why don't you shoot that shit yourself? Right. Long story short, he did. Shot, shot it ourselves. Ended up being on Showtime for a few years. Ended up being on the Platinum Comedy Series at that time. If you remember the Platinum Comedy Series with yeah. Dave Spell, yeah. Steve Harvey, Monique, DL. I was the only one that was independent. Wow. Who did I have do my music? Just a few friends. Dr. Joy did my music. <laughs> wow. Well, I called Just a, a couple friends. I called a couple other people. Will Smith was on it with me. Wow. Tyra Banks was on it with me. Jamie Foxx was on it with me. Shaquille O'Neal. Just friends. Killed it. That just all want to be a part. And that was me thinking ahead of the curve in 2001. That's dope, man. So, well, so who's your yeah. top three art do top three comedians, comedians of, of all time? time. Dead oh. or alive. Oh, well, that's real easy. Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor. <laughs> I need you to go see Number that. two. Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. Number three. And I'm gonna be honest with you. My third was he, he he's no longer with us, but Robin Williams. Yeah. Uh, Robin was, Williams was one of the funniest ever. You gotta too. throw two more in there, man. Uh George Carlin was incredible for the wow. people out there. I never that heard don't that. know who George Carlin was. He was one of the most brilliant comedians ever. He was white, and he was Blackballed from Hollywood because he was too real. He I'm almost talked. I'm gonna look him up, man. You gotta look him up. And then once you watch a couple of George Carlin's skit sketches and some of his stand up, and you'll go, "Oh, that's why they didn't put that white boy on TV in the '70s." <laughs> he was too. He was almost like he was almost an angry nigga, but a white guy. <laughs> oh wow! So ABC, NBC, CBS back in the day were like, "Ah, uh, we can't put this white boy on our TVs at eight o'clock." in everybody's living rooms. Right. Really. George Carlin, one of the funniest comedians ever, but he was so real. He was white. He was so fucking real. Wow. That they, Hollywood passed him up. Billionaire as far as stand-up goes, sold out every arena in America. George Carlin, look at him. Hollywood up. wasn't trying to hear it, man. Well, Hollywood was like, ah. <sighs> yeah, well, yeah, how can people get this book? The Amazon? Amazon, the, the funny don't stop. You can get it on Amazon. What you could do in real easy, Go to my Instagram, funny man Alex Thomas, and just click the link. The link in the bio, and it'll go straight to it. So let me explain uh, what it what the deal is. So Amazon has millions of books, mm -hmm. right? Since I knew, and my book has only been out a month now, it's not on the top of the list, right? So it's very important for people to leave comments, leave reviews, because that helps you go up the bestseller list. Wow. So if you just went on Amazon right now and just put Alex Thomas, the funny don't stop, it's not going to be the first book to pop up. Wow. So people go, man, what's going on? I look, you know, you just got to dig a little deeper and you got to go under books and just go and you'll see the funny don't, don't stop. stop. Okay. But if you just click on my link, it'll come up right away. Man. Got it. Yes, Thank you it, so much. And it is the funny. I want y'all to spread the word too. Come I'll on, man. We're going to spread it. We, yeah. we, I'm going to get my signature on here before we leave. Bro. Absolutely. And, and I, I, thought I, had a I came with all me. the way to California. You was the first person I booked to be on this show. Um, then I, I, I told my wife, I was so excited. I said, man, I got Alex Thomas, man. She say, who? I say, he's playing on Jamie Foxx. So, oh, really? Mm -hmm. And we were just happy about it. Me and my wife, we're a team, man. Man, so, I appreciate that so much. And uh, I love seeing black love. Oh, man. That's a beautiful thing. Man, we, I love my wife. Me too, man. I love my kids. I, I wouldn't even do this. I, I'd be somewhere. I don't know what I'd be without her. Uh, come on, man. <laughs> we give all praises to, to the black women. And the beautiful black wives out there.
Man, Cause so, I, I feel like that's important. Hey, man. So, man, thank you, man, for coming yes. on the show. We love you, brother. Appreciate you. Say, man, man I'll thank never you. forget you, and I'll never forget what you did today here on Boss Talk 101. Man. Absolutely. Say, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out.